What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about fat loss sprints. Now what do I mean by fat loss sprints? I think I coined this term. I could be wrong. It could be somebody else, but I think it was me. I'm gonna say it was me. If it's not me, then whoever coined it can get in the comments and discuss your lawsuit there. <laughs> Just kidding, don't sue me. Fat loss sprints are something I have personally enjoyed doing, found really great results from, and something that a lot of our users on Carbon Diet Coach have enjoyed using for their fat loss phases. When I say fat loss sprint, you could think about it as like a mini cut, except you're doing a series of them. Traditionally, when you think about doing a cut phase or a fat loss phase, we usually think about, okay, well, we're gonna do 12 weeks of fat loss, or I'm gonna try and lose X number of pounds. And most of us just go in a straight deficit until we get there. And that certainly is one way to do it. However, there's some evidence that adherence might be better, and also some evidence that physiology Physiologically, it might be a little better to take it in chunks. Most times when we think about intermittent dieting, usually we're thinking about refeeds or diet breaks, and diet breaks can be part of and are part of fat loss sprints. But fat loss sprints differ from just diet breaks insofar as diet breaks can be inserted anytime during like even a long cut where you're in a sustained deficit. Fat loss sprints really are only lasting two to four weeks at a time before you're inserting a diet break. How do I define a fat loss sprint? A fat loss sprint is usually a pretty aggressive deficit for two to four weeks. And I don't really go longer than four weeks. And usually, I'm trying to see about 0.8 to 1% loss of body weight on average, a weekly average, over the course of that time. Why do I like fat loss sprints? I like them because one, I find that adherence tends to be a little bit better with people because they're only doing the fat loss phase for a short period of time. So instead of thinking, well, I gotta do this for 12 weeks, and so when they get four or five weeks in, they start thinking about how much longer they have to go to get to their goal, and it becomes very disheartening for them. And you can start to see adherence start to wane. We see this in studies. The longer a fat loss phase goes, the lower adherence becomes. But if I know that I'm just going to do two to four weeks of fat loss before I have a diet break, it's a lot more encouraging. And by being able to go aggressive during that time, I get to see results much faster during that period of time, and that is also encouraging. Now, some people will say, well, Lane, you really encourage people to not diet aggressively. That's true, but I'm talking about the overall rate of fat loss. If I'm using fat loss sprints, and let's say I'm doing two to three week fat loss phases. Let's say I'm losing about 1% of my body weight, which is around, for me, two pounds or a kilo per week on average. Well, if I'm doing, say, three weeks of fat loss and then two weeks of diet break, over the course of 10 weeks, I might lose like 12 pounds if I'm losing two pounds per week of fat loss sprint. 12 pounds in six weeks, which is the period of time I'm in the deficit, is pretty quick. But 12 pounds over 10 weeks while inserting diet breaks is not that fast. It's still a conservative overall rate. And you can afford to be more aggressive when you're doing short fat loss phases because it's not a sustained deficit and because it takes a longer period of time to start to really see those losses of lean mass. So adherence is a big reason why I like it. It's more encouraging because that you get to see weight loss results pretty quickly because you're having a steeper deficit than saying, well, I wanna lose one pound per week. So that's a 500 calorie deficit per day, which is a relatively conservative deficit and your weight can fluctuate, bounce all over the place. And so you're really not getting that like immediate feedback of seeing quick weight loss. Whereas this, you get to see some quick results, but it's balanced by also having diet breaks at maintenance. I also like it because of the psychological aspect of when it starts to get hard, you can look at it and say, well, I've only got to do this for 14 days or 20 days. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm feeling hungry, this and that, but I've got a diet break five days from now, or I've got a diet break 10 days from now. And you can still do this while incorporating some higher calorie days, doing calorie cycling within those fat loss sprints, which is exactly what I do. I do two higher calorie days at my maintenance calories on the weekend, and then during the week, I do a pretty aggressive deficit of about 
you know, a thousand to 1200 calorie deficit per day so that I can lose weight, still enjoy the weekends. And then after a couple of weeks, I switch to a diet break. The other thing this does is allow you to periodize your nutrition around events. So I'll give you a great example. I started doing this back in 2019 when I was dropping down from 230 pounds after I had competed at Raw Nationals back down to about 205 pounds. I started in late October and I knew that we were going to have a vacation in mid-December for my birthday and Christmas. We also had Thanksgiving coming up. So what did I do? I did three weeks of a fat loss sprint and then I went to maintenance during the week of Thanksgiving. Then I did two more weeks of a fat loss sprint and then went to maintenance for a week while we we're on vacation. Then I did another week fat loss sprint then went to maintenance over Christmas and New Year's. Then did another three weeks of a fat loss sprint and then went to maintenance the week of Gasparilla. Then did another four week fat loss sprint and went to maintenance for the Arnold. So you can see I'm planning my fat loss sprints around when I can actually devote the time and to when I don't mind having lower calories. Most people get thrown off track from their fat loss goals when events pop up or there's travel involved or stress, those sorts of things. But with this, you can actually program around the times that you'll know you'll have time and can make it a focus. So I really like fat loss sprints for those reasons. Now, physiologically, there is some evidence that the bulk of metabolic adaptation or one phase of metabolic adaptation, which is the reduction in metabolic rate in response to a calorie deficit, is during the first two weeks of the deficit where you get that depletion of glycogen. By doing a fat loss sprint, you have that period where you're starting to adapt and then if you switch to maintenance, it may help attenuate that. In fact, there are some studies that show that when you move to maintenance, you can actually attenuate that metabolic adaptation. I'm taking some liberties with this research. There isn't enough research out there to say, hey, if you do weight loss like this, you'll never have metabolic adaptation. Your metabolism will stay high. I'm not ready to say that's what the research shows. There is some evidence that doing these short sprints may have a more positive effect on maintaining your metabolic rate. What do I recommend? What I do is again, two to four week sprints of fat loss where I'm in a pretty aggressive deficit. And then I do anywhere from one to two weeks at maintenance typically. I might go a little bit longer if it's in something like the holidays and I don't really feel like dieting and New Year's, that sort of thing. So maybe I'll do two and a half weeks or three weeks, especially since my birthday's on the 15th of December. But generally my diet breaks at maintenance will last about one to two weeks. So the way I like to compare it is, would you rather jog the entire marathon or would you rather go hard for a mile and then pull back? for a mile, go hard for a mile, pull back for a mile. Some people are gonna say, you know what, I'd rather just jog the marathon. And for them, a straight deficit over a period of time, great option. It'll still work just fine. But if you're like me and your attention starts to wander quickly and you like that carrot on the end of a stick mentality, maybe fat loss sprints are the way for you. If you guys are interested in doing fat loss sprints and would like more guidance, one of the easy ways to do this is using our app, Carbon Diet Coach. So our app will, one, take the guesswork out of figuring out what your macros should be. Two, you can do high and low calorie days with our diet planner. And three, it will keep track of your estimated maintenance calories so that when it's time to do diet breaks, you can just easily switch over to your maintenance. And then when it's time to do fat loss again, you can switch back. That's how I did it. That's how I lost 30 pounds from 2019 and 2020 and basically maintained my performance and never really felt like I was dieting that much. So if you guys are interested in our app Carbon Diet Coach, you can click the links in the description and I think you will love it. We have over 40,000 users and we've had thousands of people with amazing testimonials. So go check it out and I will catch you guys again next week.